Hello world, my name is the Canadian Gaming Penguin and this is Final Fantasy XIV Online. I will be doing a playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV in a series of videos. This will include the main story and side quests. I decided to include the side quests because they are a nice way to learn more lore and story of the specific areas in the game. In this first video, I will be giving a bit of background about the game and a bit of background on how I came across this game, the reason why I'm playing this game, and why I'm doing these videos. If you would rather just watch the playthrough, the next video on the playlist will be the first video of the playthrough. You can find the playlist on my channel. An Introduction to the Game Final Fantasy XIV was initially released in 2010. I was not able to play when it was first released, but from what I've heard or read from others that were, the game did not have a good start. Thus, Square Enix decided to take down the game, along with making changes on the development side. I imagine that nearly all, or all of the original players were upset about the takedown. I also imagine that some were later amazed at the way that Square Enix took the game down. A link of one player's perspective of the end event and the corresponding cutscene that took place can be found in the description below. This cutscene, I believe, will also be seen in the main scenario questline, or MSQ, later on anyways. Further, if you wish to know more about the background, you can visit this page, which includes a playlist of the original 1.0 cutscenes, 1.0 being the original game. This page will be in the description below immediately after the player's perspective link. In my opinion, what Square Enix did to take down the game was amazing. Upsetting, but also amazing. Finally, in 2013, Square Enix launched Final Fantasy XIV A Realm Reborn, and it truly was A Realm Reborn. A Realm Reborn is considered as 2.0 rather than a 1.0 because it's actually a sequel to 1.0. This year, 2018, it is the 5 year anniversary for the release of A Realm Reborn. I also feel like instead of having a completely new version of the game, having made a game a sequel of sorts was a real and true nod to the original story and good tribute to those players that stuck with the game. Now how I came across the game? I had received a code slash key for A Realm Reborn in a Humble Bundle in roughly 2015 or 2016, but at the time I didn't have a computer that was capable of running the game on, and I was also wary of games that required a paid subscription, or require playtime, or were online games. At the time, also, I was a university student, so I didn't have the time to commit to playing a new MMO, a paid one at that. Time passed and I forgot about having a code for the game and the game altogether. Then last year, 2017, sometime in August, I was looking around for an MMO that had a similar feel to the anime Sword Art Online or the anime Log Horizon, and in my search I rediscovered Final Fantasy XIV. I saw there was a 30 day free trial and I decided to give the game a try. Partly because it was Final Fantasy, I also expected that it might be the MMO I was looking for. I was not disappointed. I immediately fell in love with the game. I was impressed with the opening cutscene, the story, the graphics, the sound, the list goes on. I was also impressed that some of the abilities that a user has, such as teleporting, are intertwined with the story and the lore of the world. It didn't take me long to buy the game, which was conveniently bundled with the then two expansions to the game, Heaven's Ward and Stormblood. I also decided that it was worth subscribing to this game for two reasons, the first being that I loved how the game was, and two, that the game was still fairly popular so I found that there was little risk in investing time and money into a near to dying game, which this game is not. The only drawbacks I found to the game were that not everything had voiceovers, and there were quite a few things in the game that required cooperation with other players, the latter being something I was not a fan of due to past experience in other MMOs, mostly free ones. To the former, the not having all the voiceovers, I decided that this was okay, because it meant that it was easier and faster to get new content and story into the game than if it had voiceovers for every cutscene because there are a lot of those. 
To the latter, the cooperation between players got better, mostly because I was able to join a free company, or FC, that is and was a huge help. It gave me the opportunity to talk to, get help from, and play with other players and not have to worry about the jerks that can often be found in any MMO. I still come across some jerks, which can only be expected, but for the most part I do not. I have been playing Final Fantasy XIV online for a year and roughly a couple of months now. I've played all the current main scenario quests or MSQ, and I'm currently working on leveling up all my classes or jobs in the game. This includes crafters and gatherers. I'm also trying out other content that I've not yet tried, and there is quite a bit of content in that regard. Now as to why I'm doing these videos. I love the game. I wanted to be able to share just how awesome I think this game is with others, with ones who are playing the game currently, to those who are hesitant to return to the game, to those who are hesitant to try the game, or those who cannot and would like to see this game. I also felt it a good time to do these videos with it being the 5 year anniversary. Square Enix also just announced on Friday, November 16th, 2018, the upcoming expansion Shadowbringers. More information can be found via the link in the description. While those did help to influence my decision, although I had decided to do these videos before the announcement of the new expansion, I truly do want, to know, want others to know how awesome I think this game is, and I thought it would be fun to share a playthrough experience with others. These videos will be only a playthrough because I do not know everything about the game, but I will be able to give advice along the way with things I do know. I'd also like to note, because this is something I'm conscious about, my computer does not have the best setup to showcase the graphics of this game, but I think that my current setup is probably more consistent with most of the player base, based on my assumed average of PC users. Thus, if you have better setup than I do, you can expect better graphics. I think my computer does an adequate job of showcasing the game itself, and I hope that many of you will agree also. Now finally to the game. When downloading the game, one is able to start the crea character creation process, designing, naming, etc. This I found to be fantastic as I know that any game that allows player chosen design, I usually take quite a bit of time in doing that and I wouldn't be able to get right into the game immediately after downloading the game. The way Final Fantasy XIV is set up, and I'm not sure if Final Fantasy XI or Final Fantasy XV is set up in the same way because I've never played them, all you need to do is design uh, to one, save your design to one of the save slots, and then once the game is done downloading, etc., you can load that save design once you've started the process of creating a new character, thus making the process a lot faster and being able to get into the game faster. There are currently six races to choose from, Hure, Elizin, Lalafell, Mikote, Rugidin, and Ora. Aura will not be available to those who are trying the game via the trial version, as Aura comes from the Heaven's Ward expansion. With the Shadowborn expansion, there will be an additional play playable race, and it's expected that as Vera, as was teased slash hinted at at the last live producer letter. Each race has two different clans to choose from, which alters the appearance of the corresponding race. Here is a few examples of the differences of the appearances. For example, we have here with which has the Midlander and Highlander clans. With Elizin, there is the Wildwood and Duskwhite clans. Additionally, you can customize your character with various categories, and I'll show that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. As you can see, there's all these categories. Although the character does not speak in game, you can adjust the way the character sounds. <laughs> 
You can also rotate the camera angle to see the appearance changes, etc. while designing your character. After selecting the race, designing, etc. the character, it will bring you to a screen where you essentially choose your character's birthday and a patron deity. As far as I know, this does not have any actual effect on the game anymore, as I believe it was mostly for attribute stats, as in what one is strong versus, such as being strong against water. These have since been removed from the game, so I guess it's more of a being in character now. After that, one may choose to select list of classes. Currently, the starting disciple of war classes are Gladiator, Puglist, Marauder, Lancer, and Archer. Currently, the starting disciple of magic classes are Conjurer, Thaumaturge, and Arcanist. Currently, the only other class is Rogue. This class, however, is not available until a player has completed the level 10 class quest for at least one Disciple of War or Disciple of Magic class. A player must also have unlocked the Armory system. Each class changes into a job. Gladiator into Paladin, Puglist into Monk, Marauder into Warrior, Lancer into Dragoon, Archer into Bard, Conjurer into White Mage, Thaumaturge into Black Mage, Arcanist into Summoner, and or Scholar. This is the only current class that has two jobs. And finally, Rogue into Ninja. There are other jobs that are available, but are included in the expansions. In Heaven's Word, the jobs Dark Knight, Astrologian, and Machinist were added. In Stormblood, the jobs Samurai and Red Mage were added. Along with the announcement of the new expansion, it was also announced that the Blue Mage job would be released with the 4.5 patch. This job will be available to those who have A Realm Reborn, which is the base game, have reached level 50 as a, a Disciple of War or Disciple of Magic, and have completed the 2.0 main scenario. The new expansion, Shadowbringers, is said to have more jobs. I will also note that if you're not happy with your character race or design, there are Fantasia potions that can be used to change your character's race and design, and you don't have to start a new character. They won't be available right away unless bought into in the MOG station, but otherwise you can uh, get some after finishing the 2.0 main scenario quests. Now, depending on which class one selects will determine which city-state one will start the game in. This does not have any ill effect on the gameplay. There is a slight difference in one of the opening cutscenes, and there is a slight difference in the main scenario quests, but it's not that big of a deal, and if one wants, one can always try out another character starting in a different city-state, or just find a video of the storyline on YouTube, as I'm sure there's a video for it, or just read the Wikipedia for the game to find out the differences. I personally don't think it's a big deal, but because I wanted to experience it myself and for other reasons, I started two other characters in each of the other two city-states that I had not initially started the game in. After one reaches level 15 quest titled It's Probably Pirates, the main scenario quests are the same from that point forward. I made a later date have a video of each of the three beginning instances and the subsequent main scenario quests. If one chooses Gladiator, Poglist, or Thermaturge, one will begin the game in the city Ulda. Here are some short video clips of what Ulda looks like at night. If one chooses Archer, Conjurer, or Lancer, one will begin in the city-state Gridania. Here are some video clips of what Gridania looks like during the daytime.
If one chooses Marauder or Arcanist, one will begin in the city-state Limsa Luminsa. Here are some video clips of what Limsa Luminsa looks like during the early morning and daytime. The beginning class quest for Rogue is also in Luminsa Luminsa. Luminsa. I won't get into when the other jobs are available in this video, but I will later on in another video. If you're interested in knowing which classes is which type of class, that is, tank your high defense class, or healers your healing classes, or damage per second classes, aka DPS classes, they are as follows. Tank classes are Gladiator Paladin, Marauder Warrior, and Dark Knight. Healing classes are Scholar, Conjurer slash White Mage, and Astrologian. I will be dividing up the DPS classes slash jobs a bit. The melee physical DPS are of Hoogalist Monk, Lancer Dragoon, Rogue Ninja, and Samurai. The ranged physical DPS are Archer Bard and Machinist. The ranged magical DPS are Thaumaturge slash Black Mage, Arcanist Summoner, Red Mage, and Blue Mage once it's available. You will be able to see these categories within the itself in the character screen. After you've chosen your class and are okay with your character design, you will be brought to a screen that shows a real-world map of where the data centers and their subsequent servers are located. When choosing the data center and server to play on, the game itself will give a suggested server, and usually that is the server I would recommend. This said, I would recommend trying to join a data center that is closest to your geographic region, partly because, as one might assume, you will have a better play experience. Also because the time zone that you'd be playing in would be similar to those who are also in the data center. Sometimes a language barrier is also applicable. There is a higher chance that you won't have a problem with language if you choose one closest to your geographic region. Also keep in mind that some servers are more congested than others, meaning they have a larger player base on the respective servers. There are a number of servers on each data center, so pick the one that you think works best for you. I should also note that if you have friends on another server, make sure to look at the new changes that are going to be made on the data centers in North America and Europe, as Square Enix is adding another data center to each continent and the current servers will be shuffled around. That is, some servers are changing data centers to the new one. For example, this server that I play on will be changed to the new data center Crystal in North America. Something that will also be added later on is a world visit system within the same data center. This means that if you have friends on another server within the same data center, you will be able to play the game with them and even play the main scenario quest line there. More details can be found in the description below. Now that you've designed your character, chosen your starting class, chosen your data center slash server to play on, you can now name your character. It's time to start playing the game. Thus, that's it for this video. Thanks for watching! If you liked this video, make sure to hit that like button. If you have any comments or feedback, feel free to comment. The first video of the playthrough will be the next video on this playlist, which you can find on my channel. 
I plan on uploading videos every day, so make sure to hit that subscribe button and notification button to make sure you know when I release a new video. Once again, thanks for watching.